Hello, this is Yvonne Bunn with Home Educators Association of Virginia. I'm so glad you could join me today. We're going to be talking about home education and I hope I can introduce you to home education, what it is, why people homeschool, how did it develop, who homeschools, does it work, and is it successful. We're going to be talking about all of those different things. This is my homeschool family. This is our, our entire family. We have five children. Uh, on the right-hand side is our daughter and our, our oldest daughter and our son. And then on the left-hand side, we have our three younger children. They were all homeschooled. Our older two children were not homeschooled because they were not, uh, the law had not been passed when they were school age and so they were not homeschooled. We actually um, experienced all different types of education with our children, public, private, and homeschool. Uh, with our two older children, they were in public school and uh, when we began with our daughter, the school was just down the street and we decided that uh, because it was so close she could walk a, a block or two to, to school that I would be there and volunteer in the classroom and participate and um, see how things were going and she had some difficulties learning to read and so after first grade we decided that we would try something different and then we decided to put her and her younger brother into a private school and we did that and I began to volunteer there also and worked with that school for a number of years. Uh, went back at night and through external degree program, got a degree in elementary education and began teaching in our private church school. After that, we, uh, we had three more children and we met someone who was walking around the block in our neighborhood who always had her little children behind her and I knew she didn't send her children to public school and I knew she didn't send her children to our school. I couldn't figure out what she did so one day I stopped introduced myself to her and talked to her about how she educated her children. She was the first person that I had ever met that homeschooled her children and I thought it was such an unusual thing. I really thought it was so strange. I couldn't figure out why would she want to do this and we developed a friendship from that point on I asked lots and lots of questions about home education and learned a lot and we decided that we would begin homeschooling our last three children. On the left hand side there is Rachel, she's our youngest, and then there's Timothy, our next son, and then there's Aaron. And all three of those children were homeschooled. Now I had lots and lots of questions about home education. What in the world is it? How did it develop? Is it legal to homeschool? Why do people want to homeschool? Who homeschools? What about socialization? That's a big question that many people ask. Does it work? And why is it successful if it does work? These are questions that we had as parents if we wanted the answers to those questions before we began homeschooling because we wanted to do what was best for our children. You know, homeschooling has changed so much in the last uh, 20 years. We began homeschooling 25 years ago and uh, it used to be a very obscure, unknown thing and now whenever you tell someone that you're thinking about homeschooling your child, they'll always say instead of is it legal? Now they'll say, well, I have a sister-in-law that homeschools or the lady down the street I know homeschools. So almost everyone knows someone who homeschools now. So it's gone from being obscure to really a very successful mainstream educational alternative. What is homeschooling? It's not just school at home. It's not just bringing the classroom atmosphere into your home, but it's a true return to parent-controlled education. Parents are at the center of home education. Parents decide the scheduling, the yearly schedule of subjects, the textbooks, the workbooks, the daily schedule, the methods that they're going to be using, whether it's going to be visual or auditory based on the child's learning style. Parents decide on the course content, whether to present algebra at seventh grade or wait until ninth grade, American history at eighth grade or eleventh grade. 
Parents decide on the philosophy or the viewpoint that they're going to be presenting, whether it's going to be secular or religious. And parents decide whether or not to concentrate on areas of interest that their children uh, would like to learn more about. Or do they need to remediate their children to catch up on some learning gaps that they may have discovered? All of these decisions are made by the parent. The parent controls the education. It's a return to traditional tutorial instruction. And that simply means individualized instruction. It means very small class sizes, which would be the size of your family or your child's siblings. So if you have some group participation, it's usually a very small group. It's also a very disciplined, nurturing environment. And again, you can remediate your child in areas of weakness that they need to catch up on. It's also home-based and parent-led. It's under the direction of the parent and it becomes a responsibility of the parent. It's truly a thriving mainstream educational alternative. Now how did homeschooling develop? It was actually the predominant form of education until the early 1900s. From the 1630s to the 1800s, most education took place in homes with a parent or a tutor, very often a pastor, coming in to teach or tutor the children. Government education basically began as we know it today in the 1840s in Massachusetts, but even then it wasn't widespread until the 1900s. It happened then because of the Industrial Revolution. During the Industrial Revolution in the early 1900s, fathers began to leave their homes to work outside their family for a paycheck. And as uneducated immigrants came to America, economists and educators established government schools in order to educate the workforce. There are many famous people that were homeschooled. Leaders like Patrick Henry, John Marshall, George Bernard Shaw, Thomas Edison, Pearl Buck, Mark Twain, Andrew Carnegie, George Patton, Douglas MacArthur, we can go on and on. All of these people were homeschooled. There approximately were 13,000 homeschoolers in the early 1970s. But then we saw something happen in the 1980s. We saw the development in the 70s of private schools and in the 1980s we saw the development of home schools. And during this time, since 1982, 34 states have enacted home school laws, specific laws that um, tell parents what they need to do in order to home school. Homeschooling is legal in every state in the United States, but these 34 states have specific homeschool laws. Virginia is one of those. It's legal in all states, but in the other states that we have mentioned outside of these 34, homeschooling is considered private education, so it's listed as a private school. Now, how many homeschoolers are there? There are more than 50 million public and private students nationwide, including 400,000 or more now that attend charter schools. The United States Department of Education statistics in 2008 indicated there were 1.5 million homeschoolers. Today there is probably more than 2 million homeschoolers across the United States and that's about a 7% increase for the first 10 years of homeschooling. So there's a possibility of 1.5 to almost 2.5 million students that are homeschooled now. The Virginia Department of Education's latest statistics in 2009 and 2010 indicate there are approximately 30,310 homeschoolers in the state of Virginia alone. And that's a 27% increase in the last five years. Now, why do parents homeschool? We all have different reasons for homeschooling. These are some of the reasons that we hear over and over again. First of all, parents want to transmit their family values. They want to provide religious and moral instruction to their children. We have to understand that every subject that we present to our children comes with a certain worldview. Education is not neutral. Education is basically 
based on presuppositions that we all have relating to the origin of man, the purpose of man, the nature of man, and ethics that we want to pass on to our children. So education is not neutral. Parents are concerned with the cognitive development of their children for academic reasons. They are, uh, want to make sure that there is not a breakdown of family values. And we see today that there are are uh, many different curriculums that can be geared to the individual needs of students when they're homeschooled. You don't have to have tedious, busy work. Time, there's a lot of time to learn subjects that your child is interested in that they may not be taught in school. When you homeschool, there is some more opportunity for in-depth study. Children can learn at their own pace, either whether it's fast or slow. You can provide long, uninterrupted blocks of time for writing, for reading, for special projects that they may get involved in. Uh, they can learn to be more efficient uh, by working with their own learning style. Parents can understand what their children's learning styles are and gear their curriculum to that. And a student gets immediate feedback from the parent as the parent's working with them. And of course, slower students are able to overcome their weaknesses if they need to be uh, remediated. So there are lots of academic reasons for home education. Another reason parents cite is a, the development of strong family relationships. We not only need to spend quality time with our children, but we also need to spend quantity time with our children. We need to be with our children. It's important that we work with our children and that we have a caring and nurturing environment for them. Also, it develops personal responsibility. Uh, we can not only deal with academics, but we can help our children understand responsibilities in the family, give them chores to do. Uh, they can work together with other family members. So it's a wonderful way to develop strong family relationships. Safety is another reason that parents cite for wanting to homeschool. It's safety and a better learning environment. Children are safe from gangs, from drugs, from guns, from bullying, from negative peer pressure. And they're also safe to make, uh, to take more chances with creative learning. Uh, they don't have to worry about being embarrassed in front of their peers or their friends. And also they're safer and more confident since students aren't, sub aren't subjected to the fear of criticism when they're homeschooled. Another reason is guided social relationships, and this is probably one of the one of the best reasons to homeschool. Um, it's probably one of the most under, misunderstood at the same time. One of the strongest reasons to homeschool is simply because our children are not age segregated in the real world. They're with people of all different ages. Uh, think of yourself. Uh, if you've ever been in the workforce, if your husband is in the workforce now, he doesn't work or just socialize with people his own age. He's with people of all different ages. So it's very important that our children can learn to get along with people of all different ages and not being in a segregated socialization situation. Socialization with homeschooling is based on choice and common interest. It's an opportunity to have interaction with all ages. Students can volunteer. They can do service projects. They can be involved in sports, clubs, classes, community service activities. There really is a lot more time for non-academics like music, dance, hobbies, and they have friends that are actually more varied, uh, not just a chronological age group we can look when we get the socialization question uh, this one mom at the grocery store is saying are you your homeschooling aren't you worried about socialization and she says yes I am and I think socialization is something we do need to be very very concerned about but what about socialization how can we answer this question when people ask us about that it's important to realize the definition of what socialization really is According to the American Heritage Dictionary, socialization means fit for companionship with others, how to get along with age mates, the development of self-worth, and the adoption of a set of values or beliefs. Isn't that interesting? 
the adoption of a set of values or beliefs. You know, there's a belief today that in order to develop the ability to be socially acceptable, children have to spend large blocks of time with large groups of children all their own age. Interestingly, there was a Cornell study recently that indicated that children who were with their peers more than their parents until the fifth or sixth grade, and that would be between 11 and 12 years old, become peer dependent. Peer pressure produces peer dependency. They succumb more to rivalry, ridicule, negative habits, manners, conversation, and the taste of their age mates. They value the standards of their peer group more than the values of their parents. That should be a serious concern for us. Socialization will take place, but the question we need to be asking is, by whom? Who will socialize our children? In what way will they be socialized? What kind of values will they inculcate? What kind of behavior will they imitate? And what kind of self-worth will they develop? Do you know how values and beliefs and self-worth are developed? Children adopt the standards and their measure of self-worth by the person or the group with whom they have the most meaningful interchanges. Parents should be more concerned about the quality of social contacts than the quantity of social contacts something we really need to look at. In 1992, there was a study done by Dr. Larry Shires of Florida University, and he compared the behavior and social development of two groups of 70 children who were ages 8 to 10, one group of homeschoolers and one group of public and private school students. And interestingly, he found that the homeschoolers did not lag behind the others in social development. And this study was published in Better Homes and Gardens magazine. Dr. Shires also found that the homeschool children had consistently fewer behavioral problems. The study indicated that homeschool children behave better because they tend to imitate their parents, while conventionally school children model themselves after their peers. When we're looking at socialization, there are so many opportunities for our children to be with other children. So many that in our homeschool situation, I actually had to limit the outside activities that were available to our children. We had to limit it to just two things that each child could do during the week, or else we would be running around every single day. You can see from looking at this data on homeschool students how varied the activities are. On average, these children were engaged in 2.2 activities per student outside the home. 98% of them were involved in two or more activities. Activities range from scouting, dance class, 4-H, sports, field trips, volunteer work. They all demonstrate that homes, homeschoolers actually interact with lots of different people of all different ages, from all different backgrounds, in all types of social settings, which is very, very important. Now, what about their social school skills? The typical homeschool child is more mature, friendly, thoughtful, competent, more sociable, and less peer dependent, and have a higher self-esteem, according to a 2001 study from the Fraser Institute. And that's good to know. That's not something that we, as parents, can just assume about our children, but they've actually done a study that indicates that that's the case. Who homeschools? This is another question that we often have. 97.9, almost 98% of the parents who homeschool are married couples. More than 25,000 single parent families homeschool. Not that this is an easy job, but it's not impossible, especially if they get help either from relatives, uh, from someone who homeschools and is willing to assist them uh, during the day when they are not available to their children. It's not impossible if you're a single parent family uh, to homeschool. 23% of minorities now homeschool, and 3.5 children uh, are in each family that homeschools. And I think that's interesting because 0.9 children 
were was the average number of family of children in a family in 2000 in one of the last studies that I found so um, a little less than one child per family and homeschoolers generally have 3.5 children that's interesting half of the parents who homeschool attend college or have a degree their income on average nationwide is 79,000 in Virginia it's 75 to 79 are at close to 80,000. The average uh, homeschool family, 75% of them attend some type of religious services, and that could be a variety of religious beliefs. Families with special needs and those with talented and gifted children are the ones that are deciding to homeschool also. Homeschool parents really share one common belief, and that's the education of their children is primarily the responsibility and the right of parents. And there's one trait that homeschool parents have in common, according to uh, Ray's 1999 study, and it is this, quote, parents who homeschool their children are extremely interested in and concerned about the total education of their children. That's from Brian Ray's 1999 study. So there is a broad range of families who homeschool. It's mainstream except for their attitude towards education. Now, does it work? According to studies that measure academic achievement, standardized achievement test, which would be tests like the California Achievement Test, the Stanford Achievement Test, California Test of Basic Skills, the Iowa Basic, these are the tests that you probably would have taken when you were in school. You fill in the bubbles, and you work from a, a workbook and fill in the bubbles. On standardized achievement tests, the national average is 50 percentile. Homeschoolers, on average, score 70th to 80 percentiles. Homeschoolers generally average 20 to 30 percentile points above the national norm. And almost 25 percent of elementary school students perform one or more grade levels above the age level peers in public and private schools. And Interestingly, by grade 8, if they've been homeschooled from grades 1 through 8, the average homeschooler performs four grade levels above the national average. And it's so interesting that from all the studies that have been done, no, none of the studies show that there is a positive correlation between teacher certification and student performance. It's parents who are committed to their children that's the key to success with home education. Here's a graph that shows the national average percentile scores. You have public schools listed in purple or blue, and then you have homeschoolers in the red or the, the pink. And you can see the difference uh, with um, reading, language, math, science, social studies, and the core. Now, what about getting in college? You can ask colleges about that. Uh, it's very interesting to see that the um, SAT scores the, um, from 2002 shows the homeschool average was 1092. These are college boards. And the national average was 1020. This was in uh, the year 2002. And for those of you who may have your children take the ACT instead of college boards, uh, ACT scores from 2004, you would have a total of 36. Homeschoolers averaged 22.6, and the national average was 20.9. It's so interesting that colleges are now recruiting homeschoolers actively because of their maturity, their independent thinking skills, their creative creativity, their community involvement, and their extensive academic preparation. And they're not only recruiting homeschoolers, but they're offering them scholarships also. Stanford University said the key ingredient to them with homeschoolers was intellectual vitality. And Dartmouth said there was a distinct advantage because of individualized instruction. These are the ACT results that we have here. You can see those from the different years, 1997 all the way to 2009. And you can see that homeschoolers are in purple, are a bluish color, and the reddish are all test takers. So you can see homeschoolers compared to public school students as well as private school students. And they're doing very well on ACT.
Now, why do colleges recruit homeschoolers? Colleges actively recruit them, and these are surveys that have been sent out to colleges because of homeschool students' greater maturity. They've been responsible for their education during the high school level, their self-direction, their leadership qualities, because they know how to relate not only to their peers, but to adults as well, their independent thinking skills, creativity, community involvement. Many homeschoolers, because of the social activities that they're involved in, are very much involved in community activities uh, on a campus. Their responsibility for their own education, because that's been their experience during the high school years. Extensive academic preparation. Homeschoolers, while they're at, uh, working at the high school level, can also dual enroll in community college or four-year colleges at the same time because of their good study habits and because of a higher degree of college readiness. Those are all very important things that um, are a result of being educated at home. Now what are the ed educational advantages of home education? As I just mentioned, dual enrollment at community college. This is something if your child is ready uh, for dual enrollment and they would like to enroll in a community college, they are free to do that uh, as an upper, uh, upperclassman, uh, usually 16 or above, and they can enroll in a community college and get credit at the college level for classes that they take, or they can get credit at, uh, and also at the same time get credit for their um, home school. Uh, I know that when our, one of our children uh, was taking um, uh, science classes. We did biology and chemistry at the community college and without having a high school without having a high school subject in biology or chemistry she went to the community college because I didn't have a lab and took those specific courses at the community college without ever having them before and uh, did very well. She got A's across the board with those two classes as well as labs and she did that and ended up um, graduating with numerous homeschool uh, credits as well as 52 college credits that transferred into the four-year college that she went to. Of course that saved us a lot of money and it also gave her a good experience by sitting in a classroom and being able to have the opportunity to work in the labs and things that uh, she needed to do while she was taking those uh, science courses. There are many special scholarships and grants that are offered to homeschool students. You can often go to a college website and put in their search bar. You can put in the word homeschool and they may offer particular scholarships for homeschool students, opportunities for homeschool students because they really want homeschool students to come there. Most often homeschoolers graduate they don't they're not giving their scholarship money to someone who is going to drop out and not continue college after the second or third year so uh, they know that they can give their scholarship to someone who will finish at their school four-year college credit at home prior to graduation apprenticeship and mentoring opportunities uh, during the high school years when you homeschool there are many opportunities for your child to um, have a job to work uh, do volunteer work. Uh, one of our children uh, volunteered at the library. Um, she thought that she would be a librarian until she worked at the library and volunteered there and discovered that she really liked to read books better than she liked to put books on the shelf. And so um, she ended up going into science and eventually became a nurse with the uh, biology and the chemistry that she dual enrolled in. And so uh, lots of opportunities for your children to experience real life learning by being out there in their communities and volunteering and experiencing a lot of things that a lot of opportunities that are all around you. Now why does homeschooling work? Is it spending per student? Is it teacher certification, family income, parents educational level, government regulation? Let's look at each of these things. Homeschool versus public school cost. The average cost of homeschool 
is approximately $600. And I believe the last study I saw uh, was a little less than that, between five and $600. So we have $600 on here. Whereas the public school cost for one child's education on average is $9,963. So it doesn't cost a lot of money to homeschool your child. Even when we were homeschooling, we hardly ever spent $500 per child per year to homeschool. Uh, not until we got into the high school level, high school textbooks cost more money than um, elementary because you may be using workbooks and less expensive um, textbooks in elementary level. But for high school, if you are going to pay college tuition for dual enrollment, if you may be using um, uh, hardback textbook, it may cost you more money. Of course, textbooks for college would cost you more money. Uh, there would be more expenses if you're taking an online class and so forth, or you're working with a tutor or something at high school level. So it could cost more than that at the high school level. But there are lots and lots of different ways to keep the cost down with homeschooling. You can always buy used textbooks. You can barter with your friends. You can trade services. One parent can teach uh, a subject that she is um, very uh, good at and another parent can teach another subject that she excels in and you can trade off these opportunities. Uh, this is called called a co-op and you can um, meet maybe once or twice a, meet, a week with a small group of um, other students and you can have a co-op and, and uh, work with the more difficult subjects that may be hard for uh, a parent to teach. So the cost of homeschooling you could spend as much as you have to spend on homeschooling, as much as you actually have in your budget. So that's completely up to you. Is it teacher certification? Does that mean that there's going to be high achievement if you're a certified teacher? Now, if you look at this chart, you'll see here that we've got homeschool student scores in red at 88. And these are homeschool students whose parents have been certified in past years. They have been certified teachers. And then in green, you've got homeschool students whose parents have never been certified or never been um, gotten teacher certification and can not teach in public schools. And then you've got in the yellow or the orange, you've got public school students and how they score on standardized achievement tests and they are taught by certified teachers or certified tutor. And you can see that between the two homeschoolers at the, uh, the red and the green bar, between 88 and 85 percentile, it's just negligible. It doesn't seem to make any difference whether or not a parent has a teacher certification or a parent does not have teacher certification. So both of them score very high and the students who have teachers who are certified, the average is 50 percentile. Now what about family income? If we look at family income, we can see on the left hand side at the bottom uh, income begins at $14,999 or $15,000. It goes all the way up to $100,000. And you can see from this chart that it doesn't matter what the family income level is. It's between 87, actually 82 to 92 percentile. And we know average children in public schools score 50 percentile. So homeschoolers, whether or not their uh, parents have a high or average or a low income, doesn't make any difference. Parents are able to do a good job homeschooling their children. What about government regulation? If we look at this chart, we'll see, does it really matter how much the government regulates home education in our state or in your state? Does that affect the scores of homeschoolers. If you look at this, you can see that the green is low regulation, meaning there are no state requirements for parents to initiate any contact with the state. They, the students in uh, homeschoolers in those states score on average 86 percentile. Uh, moderate regulation is in orange. It shows states that require parents to send notification, test scores, some type of evaluation of the student's progress, they score 85 percentile. And then in red, you have 
states that have very high regulation. And these states require parents to send notification, achievement test scores, and evaluation, any other requirements like curriculum approval, teacher qualifications of the parents, home visits, you know, anything like this. And they score 86 percentile. So there is no difference in government regulation as far as how well students do on standardized achievement tests or how well they do academically. Now you can look at this chart and see this gives you a breakdown of the states by uh, regulation and you can see that um, red is the highest are the states that are the highest regulated states. Um, orange or yellow is Virginia. They, those are the states that are moderate and the green states are ones that have very little if any regulation. So you can look at your state and see where your state is as far as regulatory policy for homeschoolers. Now, how do homeschoolers do in the real world? How do they do when they're finished with homeschooling? Homeschoolers are more engaged in the community than other people their age. They vote 70% of the time in elections versus 29% of the general population. They attend public meetings, they write, they call public officials, they write letters to the editor, uh, they give money to causes and campaigns that they're interested in. They're involved in community service, 71% of them are, versus 37% of the regular population. So it's very interesting that homeschoolers are very much engaged with, uh, with the communities that they live in. They're most often a member of some civic organization. 88% of them are a member of a civic organization compared to 50% of the people who are in the general population. So I would say homeschoolers are very much engaged in their communities. Now why is homeschooling successful? First of all, it's a tutorial approach. It's working one-on-one -on -one with your child. It's having an individualized curriculum, a curriculum that's going to uh, work specifically with your child, uh, that's going to meet your child's needs where he's developmentally ready so that there won't be learning gaps when your children are um, beginning to study uh, a certain course and you realize that uh, you go back and, and the foundational material that your child should have learned the year before he doesn't have and so now he's struggling so you can take the time to go back and remediate your child to work with him in that area so that you can shore him up he'll be strong in that area and not constantly struggling and struggling and struggling over the same thing that's what a tutorial approach is you can also pursue the interest that your child may have uh, we had one child that was very interested in music and we didn't realize that he was interested in music until he was 12 or 13 years old. He had a friend that um, had studied classical music and he decided that he wanted to play piano also. We didn't have a piano so uh, there was no way that he could do that and we really couldn't afford to invest uh, thousands of dollars in a piano on the chance that he would do well or would really be interested in this because he just may not. And so um, but what happened with him is he started saving all of his money from his, from his paper route that he had and decided that he wanted to buy a piano. Now his brother decided he wanted to invest in a car so he saved his money for that. But this child wanted a piano and so he eventually saved up enough and we helped him. He got a piano. He worked with one of the professors on his paper route. Um, the professor taught music at um, college that uh, is here in the community that we live in. He asked if he could practice piano over at the college and of course this professor was delighted that he wanted to do that and so of course he let him do that and while he was over there he would take his um, CDs and he would listen to them and he would uh, practice piano and practice the um, uh, classical music that he loved so much. We eventually got him 
music lessons and within two years the music teacher that he had in our community said that there was not anything else she could teach him that he needed to move on to a full university so that he could study there he ended up getting a full four-year scholarship to a university to study music uh, he won a competition that they had and it was a full a four-year scholarship. We would never have known this about this particular child had we not had the time to pursue this personal interest that he had. He would It was so motivating to him that he would actually get up early in the morning to get all of his school work done when he was in high school so that he could be through by 9, 10 o'clock in the morning and he could spend four or five, six hours a day studying piano and practicing. We also uh, worked all of his subjects around music because he was so interested in this. He did uh, compositions, he did themes papers, he did term papers, um, he did science, history, everything that um, that we were working on, we worked on around music because that was his area of strength and a tremendous area of interest for him. So it was a great opportunity that we would have been so sad had we missed that by not uh, giving him the time to develop the talent that he had. Homeschooling also is successful because it helps you develop good character in your children. You can deal with issues as soon as they come up and certainly you're going to be aware of everything that comes up during the day because your children are going to be with you every day. So you can deal with every issue that comes up that needs dealing with and you can take the time to do that knowing that you're not just dealing with academics but you're dealing with building good character in your children. It's very important to understand that concept. Homeschooling, the tutorial appro approach, individualized curriculum, uh, making sure there are no learning gaps, pursuing their personal interest in developing good character, all of these things make a well-rounded education. It's so important for us to give our children the opportunity to have this type of education. Did you know that students who homeschool their who are homeschooled their entire academic lives have the highest achievement? That suggests that students who remain in homeschool throughout their high school years flourish in that environment. I hope this is answered some of your questions about home education. I'd like to let you know that this is just the beginning. This is just the introdu introduction to homeschooling. We have a whole webinar series on our website. We have three different uh, webinars that will give you the nuts and the bolts and the all the details about what you need to do to homeschool. The first webinar is how to begin what you really need to to know. Um, it's the uh, why to homeschool. It's uh, fact-filled and focuses you on what you really need to know for a successful first-year homeschooling. Answers questions like, am I qualified? Or how do I prepare? Where can I go for help? Uh, what type of things should I never do? Where can I get curriculum? What are some of the secrets of success? It will really give you an opportunity to get off to the right start. And then know the law, notifying and testing demystified. This helps you get through the legalese and the confusion that it, you can so easily succumb to when you're thinking about the law and the choices that you have. This goes over the Virginia homeschool law and talks about what's required, um, what uh, requirements you need to meet in order to homeschool using a notice of intent form. It talks about testing and evaluation. What are your options with that? What do you do if you have a child who has a learning disability? How do you test or evaluate him? Whom should you notify? When do you have to notify? What do you do if you're homeschooling because of your religious beliefs? What type of records do you need to keep? All of these options you need to know before you start homeschooling. And a big question, can you homeschool now if it's the beginning of the school year? Can you begin now after the year has begun? And the answer is yes, but you need to look and to be sure you understand the Virginia homeschool law. And then how to choose curriculum. That's a big question out there. There are so many methods and so many curriculum choices. I know it can be confusing. But 
we can help you choose the curriculum that will work for your child, uh, that will meet their individual needs and their learning style, help you narrow down those choices so that you'll be able to uh, know where to get these resources and know how to choose things that will fit and work with your family. If you go to the link here at the bottom of the page, which is http colon slash slash www.heav.org slash resources slash webinars at html. You can find a list of these other seminars, these other webinars, and we invite you to do that. We hope that you will get the details. We want you to be successful. We're here, HEAV is here, and we would love to be able to answer your questions. Um, Home Educators of Virginia has been uh, in Virginia for uh, 25 years or more since 1983 and we're here to support and encourage parents who want to homeschool. You can go to our website at www.heav.org and you can uh, find lots of information on our website. It's all free about how to homeschool. You can also call us at area code 804-278-9200. We'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much for joining us today.